Hey everyone, this is Nate with My Liberty Homestead. It's almost bee season here, so it's time for us to start getting our equipment ready. So that means painting high bodies, painting new colonies, getting ready just uh, in general for uh, for the season. The bee season to actually start, it really doesn't start around here. I'm in zone 6B until uh, really the beginning of May. Uh, obviously the bees are flying around collecting maple and, and a lot of other things right now. But it's time that we start getting ready, getting our equipment ready for the year. So painting high bodies, painting nukes, building nukes, you know, whatever it may be. For me, I'm trying to build up and get more colonies, so I'm trying to build more equipment all the time. I'm starting to put frames together and, and making sure I have everything ready that I'm going to need for this year. One of the things I'm starting to do is wire frames. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen online that there are people who recommend, you know, either uh, actual tin wire or you've probably also seen the fishing line. I actually recommend the fishing line if you're going to do something in, like in my case where you're going to raise your own queens. It's it probably going to happen to be that the, the bees are going to raise a queen right where the fishing line is. And if that happens to be tin wire, you're not going to be able to get it out and you're probably going to harm the queen trying to remove it as you're trying to take it into another box or a nuke or, or whatever it may be. So I think the fishing line is a great idea. So uh, I'm going to show you what I'm working with. I've seen a lot of videos online that seem to be uh, kind of complicated and a lot of extra work. Um, I think I found out a pretty decent way and it's awfully quick. Yes, yeah, so this, this whole process only takes one nail and, and just a fishing line and it really only takes about two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do it. Um, obviously there are other ways, but I think this is the best and the fastest way to do it. All right, so let me show you what you're going to need for this. So I was at Walmart the other day and saw that this was on clearance. Let's see if I can get you get a shot of that. That is a uh, Berkeley monofilament that's 15 pound line. This is just a clear. Uh, just a clear line, obviously they make all the different kind of colors, green, sun green, all, all different kinds. And you're going to need some wire nails. So what those are, you're going to need those, I'm trying to get the focus here for you. Uh, you're going to need those to actually hold the fishing line down. So you actually want them to have a, a, a wider head. Five eighths or three quarter I think are the perfect size. Uh, five eighths are what I had. Next time I'll actually buy three quarters, they're a little easier to grab onto. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put one nail in right about here on the side bar of the frame in between the two wiring holes so, and then we're going to pound it in about three quarters of the way just leaving enough of the head out that way the it can actually catch the fishing line when we when we put it underneath and all we're going to do is run the fishing line up along the top out the other side down the bottom into the bottom one and come up and actually do a tie right over here so we're, i just do two knots just two regular overhand knots, and then I do a, a clinch knot. So if you're a fisherman, you're probably familiar with that. I'll show it to you here. And all we're gonna do is get it nice and tight, pull it tight, and actually pull it over on top of the nail. All right, so we've got our frame. So we're gonna go ahead and put our wire nail in right on the end. Go ahead and tack that in. Now we just wanna leave enough space, let me see. You know just on the head that way there's enough to uh to have the fishing line grab it so we've got our nail in so we're going to go ahead and grab our fishing line and all we're going to do is run through the top wiring hole all the way over to the other top goes down through the bottom wiring hole on that same side and then back over and we're going to go ahead and go down through this bottom wiring hole here and what we're left with are two ends here so you want anywhere from five or six inches left over so you want to go ahead and grab a pair of side cuts and go ahead and snip the one tail off and all you're going to do try and get a little better close up here for you guys just go ahead and just do a couple overhand knots just something simple and make them as you know as tight as you can I'm trying to get to see so you guys can see try to make your line even on both sides pull it tight and a lot of times depending on what uh, 
test you have, whether it be eight pound or 10 pound, whatever it may be, it, the knot will actually slide, which is good, especially in this case. So then after that, I'll just do uh, a clinch knot, which is, you know, grab the, the one with your hand and wrap the other one around. Just go ahead and wrap it around. If I keep my hands on it, I'm just wrapping this around. And three or four times for this is plenty. You're gonna use that tail that you've been wrapping. You'll go ahead and put that tail right down through the small little hole we have right here. See if we can get it close up here for you, right down through here. And just pull both ends tight. Give it a pull, and we got a nice knot there. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a close up here for you guys. Shadows are getting me. There we go. All right, as you can see, this is fairly taut right now. So all we're gonna do is you grab both ends here and just pull this right over top. And it just seats right down on top of that, as you can see right there. So it just seats right there. You have your ends here. Grab your side cuts, cut those off, and you're done. And these actually have some tension on it. And that's what you want. And that was the problem I was having with a lot of the other ways of tying the fishing line on was that it wasn't taut. It was loose and it felt like it was gonna come off and it just didn't seem like it was gonna hold. Now you still have that nail that's sticking out so you're gonna go ahead and pound that in and just get it flush, it doesn't have to be rammed down. You push it down too hard, especially with a hammer, you'll, you'll end up just cutting the fishing line. So what you're left with is one frame that actually has some real tension, and we're all good to go. I mean, really, if you wanted it tighter, you could pull this end here, and then put another uh, nail right right here, and then pull this one up and over, but I really don't think you need it. I mean, this is, this is plenty, and this should be pretty supportive. For whether it be a honey super or for a brood frame whatever it may be but this this should be solid and pretty well to go um as i showed you guys before i'm using 15 pound because that's what uh what i got on sale it was a dollar 50 for 900 yards i mean so i couldn't pass it up um i think six or eight pound is probably too light so i'd probably recommend something like 10 or 12 um i'll probably stick with anywhere between 12 and 15. i like that i can actually keep my hands on this anything anything too much smaller is uh, sometimes hard, it's a little squirmy to get in and out of the holes. So anything I'd, I'd say between 12 and 15 is kind of the sweet spot. So and th this one's ready to go. Once you get good with this, this only takes a minute or two to get these in and, and get your nail in and, and, and pull these tight. Um, and that, that's what I like about it. I started doing these and I've been knocking these out like crazy. But I wanna show this to you guys and hopefully save you a lot of time and energy. If you find a, what, a better way, go ahead and send it my way because I'm wiring a lot of frames lately. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. Also check out the blog at mylibertyhomestead.com. We're talking about bees, fermentation, whether it be for mead or wine, cider. Uh, we're going to be getting into uh, a lot of beekeeping, obviously. Uh, obviously we have uh, a greenhouse going in. We're going to have to put some videos up of me getting the, uh, the, the greenhouse construction and getting it framed in and, and leveled out. So that's coming up. So uh, be sure to follow along. I, I'd love to, uh, to, have, to answer any questions or to get any feedback from you guys. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.